Today's video will be the first in a series of videos where I'm going to be fact-checking the FWC. We will be looking at statements that they make and checking to see if they're correct or just plain lies. So let's get started. On March 16, 2021, the FWC conducted a Zoom meeting and Scott Wilson called in and asked them if they had ever tested any fish for herbicides that had built up in their flesh. And this is what they said. And then Mason, I'll jump back to you for a second here. Have you tested the fish to see if they have herbicide in them? That I believe has not been successfully accomplished. From my understanding, this and this may be better answered by Ryan or Danielle, but my understanding is that that is a lot it, that is a lot more complicated, and there are not even research labs available potentially for doing certain types of of, of work like this. Um, most of the most of the work that is done, we do do pretty heavy uh, work on things, uh, cooperating with Department of Health on things like um, mercury advisories and things like that. That was Mason Smith. He is a biologist working with Ryan Ham on these lake management plans. There was a long pause, and then Ryan chimed in on the question. Ryan, did you want to add any? Okay, thanks. Yes, please. Um, so, you know, the question of have fish been tested for herbicide accumulation in their tissue? You know, uh, back a year and a half ago, as we were getting messages about um, stakeholders noticing um, from their perspective, you know, an uptick in, in abnormalities in fish that could be, you know, lesions, tumors, you know, things like that. Our agency set upon monitoring that in a co coordinated effort, you know, as part of our long-term monitoring program, where some of the important things that we want to know is what is that trend in abnormalities. Now, when you go to process the histolo histology of fish, um, that's where it gets complicated in that the majority of the abnormalities people are seeing are, are often um, bacterial infections, fungal infections, uh, dermal abrasion, things like that. Um, we are actively collecting that uh, long-term monitoring data to, to be able to tell from a scientific perspective, you know, is this, uh, these abnormalities that people are seeing trending upwards, static, um, going down? Because it's not an uncommon thing to have a, to see a fish with, you know, some level of abnormality. Now, as far as herbicide, accumulation, going back to what some of the stuff that Danielle mentioned earlier about uh, the registration process, process, the fact that these the herbicides that we use are registered for aquatic systems, to, to be able to be registered for an aquatic system, those herbicides would need to not accumulate in tissue. Um, given that fact there, you know, we, we looked at the possibility of of collecting some of these fish that people are, are seeing and trying to test uh, for any kind of uh, herbicides. And we were unsuccessful in finding labs where we were able to run any tests or that were tests available. So, um, and that's why we, we don't have that. Can't say, well, here's that information. That was Ryan Ham. He is the section leader for freshwater fish which makes him the highest ranking freshwater fish biologist in the FWC. They don't have anyone smarter than Ryan. So on June 9, 2021, I took a biologist who happens to have a PhD on Lake Kissimmee. And 10 minutes into our trip, we came across a bald eagle eating a catfish on the shore. As we approached, it flew away. So we took the catfish and put it on ice. We also saw a shad that was swimming around upside down and full of lesions. This poor fish was just thrashing around, gasping for air. We scooped it up and then it went into the cooler. Unlike Ryan who couldn't find any labs to test fish, we didn't have any trouble. We sent these two fish to the University of Georgia. We had them test for diquat, bromide, and glyphosate. 
We waited a month or so until we got the results. The catfish had 2,231 parts per million of diquat, 143 parts of bromide, and less than one part of glyphosate. The shad had 3,413 parts per million of diquat, 55 parts of bromide, and less than one part of glyphosate. They also explained to us that the reason there was such a low amount of glyphosate is that diquat and bromide don't break down like glyphosate does. And they could tell that these fish at one time had much higher levels of glyphosate than the test actually showed. So Mason and Ryan, it looks like you were wrong. First, there are labs out there that can test for your chemicals that you spray. And secondly, your chemicals do build up in the flesh of fish. And according to the University of Georgia, your chemicals were the reason that these two fish died. So for lying to us, I would like to present the two of you with the first Pinocchio Nose Award. In case you don't know who Pinocchio is, it was a wooden puppet that his nose grew every time he lied. So Mason and Ryan, the two of you have a lot in common with Pinocchio because the two of you are also puppets for the chemical cartel. The fact is our fish, turtles, snakes, birds are all dying from these chemicals. If you want the FWC to stop spraying, it's not going to happen with me or anyone else putting out videos. It's going to happen when thousands of you call and demand that they stop it. So please call Ryan and Mason and congratulate them on their Pinocchio Nose Award and share this video far and wide. Let's embarrass the hell out of these criminals.